Petworth Garden City today is a beautiful and unique town, an example to architects and planners all over the world, and a pleasure to live in. But how did the world's first garden city come about? Garden cities were the idea of social reformer Ebenezer Howard, not a big self-important industrial philanthropist, but a modest man working as a parliamentary reporter. Howard saw firsthand and read endless reports about the terrible living conditions prevailing in the country's cities and towns. And he read voraciously the works of utopian idealists like Thomas More, Henry George and Edward Bellamy, as well as seeing the precursors to his garden city idea, the industrial villages at Port Sunlight in 1888 and Bourneville in 1895. Howard didn't have a eureka moment in a bathtub, but rather soaked up all that he saw and read and put together his unique combination of proposals in a book, Tomorrow, A Peaceful Path to Real Reform, which he published in 1898. In it he wrote, Town and country must be married, and out of this joyous union will spring new hope, a new life, a new civilization." Howard proposed that garden cities would combine the best aspects of town and country with all of the opportunities, but none of the problems, that each afforded. A network of these smokeless, slumless cities could be built to give everyone the benefits of his idea. Each city would be split into zones with proportions set out for industry, green space, housing and commerce. As we can see from this slice of the model, with jam factories, housing, a crystal palace for shopping and leisure, and grand institutes surrounding plentiful parkland. The other key element of the Garden City vision was the reinvestment model, where the profits from rents were reinvested in the town for the benefit of the people. In 1899, Howard formed the Garden City Association to help gain support for his idea. In 1902, his book was republished as Garden Cities of Tomorrow, and the Garden City Pioneer Company Limited was founded, with the aim of finding a site to actually build this social experiment. By 1903, land had been found in Hertfordshire, and First Garden City Limited was formed to build and run the town. Only five years after the publication of his book, Ebenezer Howard, at the age of just 53, had seen his plans come to fruition here in Letchworth Garden City. At the official opening of the estate on the 9th of October 1903, Earl Grey said, I think Mr Ebenezer Howard is greatly to be congratulated upon the fact that within five short years, his visionary hopes for tomorrow have become the almost fulfilled realisation of today. Howard, of course, was a social reformer, not a town planner, and he needed someone to transform his ideas into a practical design on the ground. He appointed Raymond Unwin and Barry Parker, two arts and crafts architects from Buxton in Derbyshire, and they drew up this master plan for the new garden city. It features several of the key ideas that Howard had expressed in his book. The zoning of different areas for different uses, good transport infrastructure with the railway station in the heart of the town centre, workers' housing situated away from the smoke and steam of the factories, but close enough for them to cycle or walk to work or to the town centre, and green spaces incorporated throughout with recreational spaces and an agricultural area surrounding the town. The exhibition here tells the story of the Garden Cities movement, but just across town we have an archive of objects that tell the history of the town, called the Garden City Collection. We have over 80,000 items that tell the rich social history of Letchworth and the people that worked here. These include items that were made by Letchworth Industries, such as Marmot and K&L and the Spirella Corset Company. We have fine art that represents the artists of Letchworth, um, many beautiful arts and crafts plans of the buildings of Letchworth, and many thousands of photographs that tell uh, the social history of the people that lived here, their clubs and societies, and things that they did in their spare time. The collection also represents the Garden City movement. We have the archive of First Garden City Limited and its successors, and we have researchers from around the world who come to look at this archive and our extensive collection of library books, which tell the story of Letchworth, of course, and also the places that it influenced. The success of Letchworth Garden City saw the idea spread with garden suburbs in almost every city in the country, most notably at Hampstead in London. There followed a second garden city at Wellin and ultimately the post-war new towns. The influence of garden cities spread around the entire world with garden suburbs or industrial plan towns 
in continental Europe, North America, Australia, Japan and more. Ebenezer Howard's vision is alive and well here in Letchworth Garden City, with its unique reinvestment model and the success of the planning of the town. The world's first garden city looks to the future in good shape and with a sense of real pride in its rich history.